Trig Pre College Law of Signs. The Law of Signs formula is on our reference sheet. So if you take a look at your reference sheet, you'll see it over here. And the Law of Signs is a proportion formula. So A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. You're not going to have all three of these. You're just going to have like two of them. Like if you just ignore this, so you're going to have a proportion. A over sine A equals B over sine B. And you're going to have three out of the four pieces. And you're going to cross multiply. And that's, you know, how you're going to solve them. Now, remember that the lowercase letters represent the sides. And the capital letters represent the angles. And... The relationship between lowercase a and capital A is that they are opposite each other in a triangle. So if you have here is a triangle with angle A, well, this would be side A. And same thing with B and, and B and C and C and so on. So the side is opposite the angle. So we create a proportion. And you can cross multiply when you have a, you know, a missing value in your proportion. So that's the law of signs. That's what we're using in this video. So in triangle ABC... A equals 6, B equals 9, sine A equals 2 thirds, fine, sine B. Well, it's going to be A over sine A equals B over sine B. So let's just plug in what we have. That's going to be 6 over sine A. Now, again, this is what we saw in the area of the area of your triangle formula that there's a difference between giving me sine A and angle A. If they say angle A is 20 degrees, I'd be writing sine 20. But if they give me sine A is 2 thirds, then I just put in 2 thirds. I don't put sine 2 thirds, right? Are they giving me the angle or are they giving me the function of the angle? And so I just put 2 thirds because they're giving me the function here. And B equals 9. So let's put a 9 here over sine b which we don't know and that's what we're finding out and so we're going to simply cross multiply here and that's going to be uh these two pieces multiplied uh nine times two thirds and you, you're free to use your calculator here you don't have to for this but you can so nine times parentheses remember always have your fractions in parentheses parentheses two divided by three uh, my calculator is not reading all of my buttons. Divided by, come on, three is six. And so you would end up with, all right, my tablet's a little delayed right now. It would be um, six sine B equals six. Because six times sine B is just six times sine B. 9 times 2 thirds is 6, and so to solve for sine b, I would divide everything by both sides by 6 and get sine b equals 1. Okay, let's do another one. Here, angle a is 45, angle b is 30, side a is 10. What is side b? Well, I'm going to put a over sine a, and so that's 10 over, now this time they're giving me angle a, so I have to do sine of the angle, so sine 45, and b which we don't know so we'll keep it as b over sine b would be sine angle b is 30 and we're going to cross multiply this now 10 times sine 30 sorry my tablet's freezing up all right we're back 10 times sine 30 10 times sine 30 is the same as 10 times 1 half. Sine 30 is a half. And notice that there's radicals in these answers here. Uh, that, that's important because if, if this was something like 20, it would just be 10 times sine 20. It would be some decimal. But no, remember, these are special angles, so that's why they're doing that. Um, 10 times sine 30 and B times sine 45. And so that's really the same thing as 10 times sine 30 is a half. I could type it into my calculator if I don't know. And B times sine 45 is rad 2 over 2. Now 10 times a half is 5. And I'm going to divide both sides by rad 2 over 2. So I'm dividing by rad 2 over 2 to get uh, B alone. So 5 divided by rad 2 over 2. 
And remember, we, we prefer to think of it as times a reciprocal nature. So instead of 5 divided by rad 2 over 2, think of it as times 2 over rad 2. That's 5 over 1. That's going to be 10 over rad 2. And that would rationalize to be 10 rad 2 over 2, which then can be simplified to be 5 rad 2. Now, this is multiple choice, so you could just do this all on your calculator, you know, 10 times sine 30 divided by sine 45. You know, let me type that in here. 10 times sine 30. I like to do enter before I divide. Oh, I'm in radians. Sorry. My calculator on this, this program resets every time where yours should stay on radians. Uh, 10 times sine 30, there's my 5, divided by sine 45, will get me some decimal, but I could type in 5 rad 2 and confirm that that is indeed the, uh, the exact value. Jeez, this tablet's being very annoying today. Divided by uh, rad 2, 5 rad 2, not 5 squared. And so that is um, not the same thing because it read as I my calculator thought I wanted to divide by sine 5, not sine 45. So it, it will work out. The, this calculator is reading only half the buttons I'm pushing. I apologize for that, but it does work. All right, number three. This one's a little bit different. Instead of just saying find sine A or find side B or something like that, it's saying how many distinct triangles. That's one of those key phrases that you need to recognize anytime they give you that. This is called a ambiguous case question. How many distinct triangles? And and that when you see that that phrase distinct triangles or how many triangles, you automatically need to know that means law of sines. And basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing law of sines to find an angle. And there's a couple ways that could go. Let me show you what's happening here. So we do have a complete set with side A and angle A here. All right, we have a 10 and, and, and angle 35 for, for A. So that would be 10 over sine 35. Sine 35. And then I have side B here is 13. And that would go over sine B. So let's just use our calculator to do our law signs. You're going to multiply the two pieces you have, 13 times sine 35. Hopefully the calculator works a little bit better here. Times sine 35. And then you divide by 10. And that will get you the, uh, the value of sine b. And so... Timesing these and dividing this will get you your missing part of the proportion. But we have sine B here. And what we actually want is angle B. So if I have sine B is 0. 0.7456, let me write that down. Sine B equals 0. 0.7456. But uh, the way to get angle B then is to do the inverse function. So you type in second sine second answer second sign and second answer is our shortcut for uh, instead of retyping that decimal out second sign second answer gives us 48.2 so on so on so on. let's just round it to a whole number to make it simple let's say 48 all right so what's this have to do with how many triangles there are see the problem is remember that sign is positive in two quadrants right so in quadrant one and in quadrant two like when we say sign a equals one half that could be 30 or it could be 150 and they could both be angles of a triangle so when you do law of sines to find an angle like in this case you also have to consider the quadrant two version so 48 or what would the quadrant two version of 48 be it would be 180 short of 48 would be 132 so when you do law of sines to find an angle, or it asks you how many triangles there are, you do the cross multiplication to find sine b and then inverse function to get angle b, and your calculator will give you an answer. But you always then got to do the, you know, the supplement of it to find its quadrant two potential. 
And now we need to evaluate each of these. And so angle B could be 48, or it could be 132. Now we do know that angle A is definitely 35. That is a definite problem that tells us that. And so what we do then is we see what would the third angle be in each scenario. We have 48, we have 35, what would that third angle be? And the way you do that is you do 180 minus the angles you have. So minus 48 and minus 35 is 97. And so that works out just fine, is 97. And then what would it be over here? Again, we just use our calculator and subtract. We have 180. Minus 132 and minus 35. There we go. And that tells us 13. And so what you see here is we have two distinct triangles that fit this formula. Because law of sines tells us the angle could be 48 or 132. And so we have one triangle here that works. And we have another triangle here that works. And so that's why the answer is 2. And there's a couple ways this could go. Um, say this was, you know, come out to be 150, and this was 35, then there's no room for a third angle. If these two add to 180 or more, then you can't get a triangle here, and we'd only have one that would work, and the answer would be 1. Occasionally the answer is 0, but it is never 3. And so when they have these how many triangle questions, it's either going to be 1, 2, or 0, and it's basically the law of signs, and then a test of different scenarios. I'm sorry this video ran a little bit late. I think it's, it's the delay of the uh, tablet because the computer's running a little bit slow today. That's kind of slowing me down, so I apologize. So that means I'm going to actually skip numbers 4 and 5, and uh, we'll, we'll start with, um, well, we can start with number 5 tomorrow in class. All right, see you.